to make sure everyone, every voice is heard, whether you're in the room or remotely. John Fillion, um, I want to talk to you about that multiplex report because no, my residents uh, are not very. Councillor Robinson. So did they? Did they Councilor do something Robinson. at committee like an action? Yeah. Councillor Robinson. It, it's, it's John. John and, and Councillor Robinson. Yes. Everyone and, and can hear it, your discussion, uh, and we want to convene the meeting. It takes a little bit of time to explain, but. Um, Okay. It's bad enough okay. that um, I am probably going to try to lift it from committee, um, and it which Councilor means Phil and Councilor Phil and, and Councilor Robinson. Everyone can hear your private conversation. No, no, I know that it's not. It's not that private though. It's the same as what but I said in need, committee. I'm, we're trying to start the meeting. Yeah. No. Good. Start okay. it. Yep. Sorry. Okay. 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 Can, can people, can people hear, me? hear me? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. everybody. My name is, My name is uh, James, James Pasternak. Pasternak. I'm the chair I'm the of North Air Community Council. Council. I'll be chairing, chairing today's, today's meeting. meeting. I do I apologize, do apologize for, for all the confusion. confusion. There's, There's uh, as, as a night nationwide. nationwide, nationwide, nationwide outage of Rogers. I want to welcome everybody. Today's meeting is being held with members of council and city staff participating both by video conference and in person at North York. Your mic's off, James. Can they hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now, John. Yeah. There's a nationwide, you said there's a nationwide something. Roger, there's outage. North York Community Council is once again open to the public and everyone is well welcome to attend the meeting in the council chamber. Chamber. I ask for everyone for their, their patience with any delays or technical issues. Members, the city clerk has provided all agenda items, uh, material online at toronto.ca backslash council. Although we are in different locations today, the committee would like to acknowledge that we are meeting on the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississauga Quetet, the Ashwanabi, the Chippewa, Haudenosaunee, and Wendat peoples, as now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Missaga of the Credit. Are there any declarations of interest under the Municipal Conflict of Interest Law? Seeing none. So this is a special meeting to consider reports require a statutory public meeting in accordance with Planning Act or the City of Toronto Act and items deferred from June 28th 2022 meeting of North York Community, Community Council. We have five. We have, we have nine nine final reports. Time for 9:30 and two deferred items. So let's uh, go through the agenda for non-timed items. Item 34:10. 6125 Young Street, 10 Center. I don't have any speakers on this item. I have a motion, which I hope Julie has. I have the motion. We can display it in one moment. Which would be to adopt the staff, uh, nuts. Adopt yeah, the staff so. report with the following... Uh, addition, I guess, Julie. Okay, let's put the motion on the screen. Just so you know, uh, uh, Councillor Pasternak, we're 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 trying to hear you, but you sound a little like Lou Gehrig in Yankee Stadium. It's it's really echoing. <laughs> yeah, the, the the acoustics are very rough. There's the motion. We can hear you, though. We can we can hear you. It's just delayed and there's an echo, but we can hear you. So 
Anybody need me to explain this? No. All right, the motion's there. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. The item is amended. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Item 3411, uh, parking amendments, Castle Grove Bo Boulevard. I, can I don't move, have I can any deputations on the item. Councilor Menawong? Yeah, I can move a motion. I went out and talked to some of the residents and there was um, there was a lack of consensus on what to do. Um, at the last meeting, there was a petition sort of presented that said all the residents were opposed. That wasn't exactly correct. Um, and what you usually find is the guy goes, you know, what you can't find in these circumstances that people are, uh, when a neighbor comes around, you kind of feel an obligation to sign something. So there were some people in favor, but there were some people who weren't so keen on it. So because there's a lack of consensus, I'm prepared to move a motion to defer indefinitely. Okay, item 3411. Local councillor has moved this item be deferred indefinitely. Yeah. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. So that disposes of the untimed items. We're gonna go to the top of the agenda. Mr. Mr. Chairman, um, all the statutory public meetings were scheduled for 9.30, yes? Yes, that, that is true. Okay, so I, I, I'm going to give you an idea. You can do it as you will. There are, I'm looking at the speakers list. There are some items that like only have one speaker, and I'm wondering whether it would make sense to dispose of the ones that had one speaker first, just so we can kind of... Uh, clear clear the agenda quicker okay just give me one second all right since okay thank you thank you so since they're all time for for 9 30 i'm going to go to to item 34 4 These don't have screens. And then four now has nothing. Sorry, is that item four? Is that 71 to Lara? Yes. Uh, Councillor uh, uh, Carol, this is your item. There's no deputations. Thank you. I just have a couple of questions of staff. Questions of staff? Thank you. Um, so I sent uh, I sent them while we were waiting to connect. Um, I sent some questions to the planner. I, I don't know if they were able to get the uh, housing staff. There are questions about the tenant relocation. I don't know if they were able to, to get them uh, available to the floor. Staff available. Um, Sorry, through the chair, it's David Sit here. Um, we are trying to locate housing staff right now. So perhaps we can stand this item down for a few minutes. Yeah, yeah, because I, I I, would like to, to this. it's important before adopting this that I just make sure the tenants are okay uh, by getting these questions answered because it may require me to just add one additional motion. So if we could stand it down, Mr. Chair, I do have to get an answer to those questions. Okay. Go backwards to item 34 or 3, 70 and 80 Wixtia. Councillor Robinson, I don't see yeah. any deputations. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, okay. I want to check my audio. Can you hear me? Okay, thank you, yes. yep. Carol. Vice Chair. Thank you. Okay, so um, I would actually like to move this item to council without recommendation. 
just because we need one more item on council uh, coming up. I'm being, I'm being facetious. But um, there's a lot of un, undone pieces and parts to this. Um, you know, it's going to be a welcome, it's going to be welcome in a sense because this area has actually been dubbed or labeled Lake Leeside after the crater that was ba basically occupied this site. I think it's someone made a joke about it being on Google Maps. I don't know if it's true, but it's a massive lake um, where the proposed Canadian Tire is um, and has been for years and staff have had a very difficult time managing this okay. site. Thank you. Um, there's been right now there's a we're near the final stages um, and there's a number still a few outstanding issues um, and staff have a holding provision in place on this with engineering and construction specifically that's where the most of the challenges are. So for that reason, I think there's um, there's some room for improvement on this application. Uh, one good one good news piece is uh, for the public realm on Laird, and it needs public realm that street more than any other street in my ward. Um, they have flipped, they have inserted the retail, like embedded the retail, not the retail. I'm sorry, the automotive center has been embedded. Um, and so that's been after months of discussions, that is a good news item on this, that the automotive center recent. is less on yeah. the, um, I can hear you, Mr. Chair. It's less on the, on the street, less impact on the streetscape. But we did get an email from, and it's probably before you, um, from the Leaside Residents Associations wondering about the setbacks uh, to help improve public realm and also pursuing higher levels of the Toronto Green Standard. Instead of Tier 1, uh, it's the bare minimum. So um, we've got a couple weeks before City Council, and I'm just hoping that we can work with the applicant to address some of these outstanding issues. They're not huge, they're minor, but I think more time is needed. So I am moving today uh, this item to Council without recommendations, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councillor Robbins. Okay, uh, there's a Mr. Referral. Chair, quick point of order, Mr. Chair. Um, on item number four that I had to stand down, I understand that the the difficulty in in getting the the uh, um, the housing planner um, to come forward for questions has to do with the Rogers outage. But I, the questions I want to ask and resulting motions won't have financial implications or affect the, the built form or anything like that. So what I could do is adopt that item today. And at council, if I need to add a couple of things to, into the, uh, the tenant conditions, I could add those as technical motions at council. Okay. That's a great idea. Okay. Um, so we're currently on number three. Uh, Councillor Robinson has... Um, move that it be sent to council without recommendation. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. And back to item four. Uh, Councillor Carroll, are you prepared to move staff recommendations? Yeah, I'll, I'll move the staff recommendations as they stand and, and then the, the other things don't have financial implications. So we'll, we'll, we'll do those at council. But we'll move the recommendations that you see on the agenda today. Okay. On item four, uh, uh, Councilor Carroll is moving staff recommendations. All those in favor? Opposed? Uh, that is carried. Item number five, I have deputations. Is Andrew Ferencek in the room? What is item number five, Mr. Chair? I don't have uh, access to an agenda list. Yeah, we were trying to do item five 
because there's only two deputations. No, but what is you item read five the title out? of the items, please? Sure. There's a terrible echo in here. Young Street North Planning Study. Hello, Mr. Chair. It's Andrew Franchek. Okay, Mr. Franchek, you have five minutes. Thank you very much for your time. Um, I'll speak very briefly. I, I'm actually on my way into the council chamber because I was having some problems, but um, I'll just uh, make my presentation here. I am here on behalf of two applicants. We have submitted some correspondence with respect to the proposed secondary plan. One of our main concerns is the fact that we only had four days to comment as an industry and as landowners on the actual content of the secondary plan. And it is quite a far reaching and, and actually visionary document but uh, we think more time would be appropriate for the industry to uh, properly digest all the policy uh, implications of such a document. Uh, and the main concerns that my two clients have on Young Street, uh, we represent a client on uh, two clients um, on the east side of Young Street, one in the first block south of Steeles, uh, right next to where the subway station will be, and three blocks to the south at Athabasca. And both of those sites have been identified for mid-rise buildings, um, which is really a designation that's unique to the east side of Young Street. And as the plan was developed over the course of the last, I would say, eight years of consultation um, through various studies, that was always identified as high rise. And the way that North York Center is developed to the south is the same. All the tallest buildings are on Young Street and everything else descends from there. This plan deviates from that and mm -hmm. it, it kind of happened last minute where uh, those lands have now uniquely been designated for mid-rise development, and we're looking for um, staff and community council to consider um, revisiting that. And uh, we think the highest heights and intensity should be along Young Street, in particular on the east side, and in particular closest to the transit station with everything else transitioning down from there. There are some other policy implications that uh, came out of our review of uh, that document. And we think that more time would be appropriate, if uh, possible, to be provided for review. Uh, I'm here to answer any, any questions you might have. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Any questions for the deputy? Yeah, sure. I'll I'll ask uh, the deputy. Are you aware that that change um, relates to um, uh, infrastructure that is located under the laneway, and that? Uh, Therefore, development cannot take place uh, on the laneway itself. Therefore, the sites on Young Street are uh, very uh, shallow. Three, three, Mr. Chair. Yeah, yes, Councillor, I am aware of that. In fact, we've done some built form studies that have indicated that those sites, despite being, um, you know, I think in staff's opinion, shallow for uh, tall building development can actually accommodate tall buildings. And so I think that that's been the finding of other landowners as well. And so that that's part of the key why, you know, we're, we're thinking that the plan needs to be revisited and, and to go back to, to look at what's actually possible in those blocks, because um, we think that is the most appropriate location for for height. Uh, thank you. So I'm, I'm going to suggest that you, um, you know, make all those submissions to staff if you haven't already. There's still some time between now in council um if uh you know for staff to review that and uh, recommend any changes if they uh if they want to but i think there's um some you know a technical basis for those recommendations thank you sam abati Mr. Abadi. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. You have five minutes. We have objections with the property owner. 
So, so Julie, what well, we uh, what we might do? Carol, I, we, I don't... we need the deputy to be on a microphone. Is not working. Okay, please proceed. Yeah, it's working. So it's just over here. Okay. Uh, can you hear me now? Okay. Very good. I'm uh, representing basically the property owners at 6337 Young Street. Our council was trying to reach uh, through internet. Apparently, he doesn't have access. Uh, we have the same objections. We didn't have much time in order to reflect on this properly. We were based on the view that was presented in the previous meeting in on May uh, 10th. It was a different view. Apparently, the city has come to a different conclusion at this moment, or the committees. Uh, we need more proper time. We have put an objection, but uh, we would like to further the study, uh, the effects of uh, the decision or the proposal by the city uh, for the block east of Yon, south of uh, Steels. Thank you for your deputation. Are there any questions for the, for the deputy? Um, yeah, just similar to it, the last applicant, did, um, were you able to attend uh, any of the uh, more recent or the most recent community consultation meeting where this change was identified? Uh, yes, I was at the previous uh, meeting as well online. I saw the new proposal and I was quite surprised as well which was in total contradiction of the meeting on May 10th, 2021. And were you aware that that was because of some, um, a new technical understanding about what um, infrastructure is located under the laneway that cannot be built on top of? I'm aware that there are apparently, uh, basically the sewer system or the drain system which are on the laneway, which was not mentioned on the meeting of May 10th last year. So apparently this has just popped up. Uh, everybody was reviewing uh, the meetings of last year. So everybody was basically thinking, we have been in discussion with other property owners along Young Street, literally from Center Street up to Seals Street. And we know the developments which are happening just north of Toronto on the city of Juan or Markham and on the other side, everybody else seems to have the same issues. On the north side, they don't, apparently the proposals are for 60 stories, 50 story buildings. And all of a sudden on the south side, we are facing mid rise. So yes, but I'm just asking, are, for you're, you're aware that you're aware that I'm just confirming that you're aware that that is because of the unique circumstance uh, of uh, major infrastructure being located underneath that laneway, which wasn't um, entirely known or understood uh, a year ago, but was um, clear by the time we had the last uh, community consultation some time ago. I understand that, uh, Mr. Filia. I understand that these proposals have been on the agenda since 2013. So apparently it is taking a long time in order to figure out there are, there are infrastructures on the lat laneway. So from 2013 to 2021, it has been eight years. We could have figured that out. And all of a sudden right now we are facing this. So we're objecting to this to go through. We want further studies on this issue. Maybe alternatives since the subway is coming into Steels, and uh, there's going to need uh, infrastructure issues along the Young Street as far as these uh, Steels. 
and even Metrolink's proposals have changed. So why not just have further studies on alternatives and possible infrastructure changes? Okay, thank you. I, you answered my question. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Fillion. I don't have any other deputations on this item. Questions for staff? Yeah, I'd just like to ask staff to explain, um, um, you know, what has happened with regards to the laneway and um, the reasons for the uh, um, change in recommendations over the past uh, several months. Uh, yes, good morning. Through the chair, um, we've been looking at the laneway for a while. Um, it does have storm and sanitary under it. Um, we were looking at the ability to relocate it, but through further conversations with Toronto Water and Engineering and Construction Services, uh, it's significant infrastructure that services um, not just the properties adjacent to it. There are no services in Young Street because of the subway. Um, so it actually is servicing um, a couple of blocks east of there all the way to Willowdale as well. So it's major infrastructure um, that would be extremely complicated and difficult uh, to relocate. And you wouldn't be able to do it um, kind of haphazardly. Uh, you'd have to do a significant uh, relocation work that we don't think is feasible uh, and that the sewer needs to stay where it is. Um, um, thank you. Um, I don't, um, I don't have any um, further questions. Um, I may later, if depending on what others ask. Thank you. Can I just, I have a question, Mr. Chair. Councillor Carroll. Yeah, I, um, I actually. You're going to fix I, it. Just... Pull it out now, and fix it before. Oh, sorry. So I just. Just so, just so the local councillor knows, I actually asked about this when I saw the item, because it, you know, the, it looks like this panhandle up, uh, up there. So I, asked, it was odd. So I asked about it and found out about the infrastructure issue. But it occurred to me after I asked, and it, and and one of the deputies just raised it now. If, you know, if we if we zone this way and say we don't want to move that infrastructure uh, later on down the line, when Metrolinx really comes to do their their subway or do we already know whether or not they will need to go underneath this or is their alignment already avoiding this infrastructure? Because I, I just wonder if if we, we zone this way and uh, um, and the owners of the properties, or we've heard from them, they're not happy. If later on down the line, Metrolinx comes through, they're, they're, they get whatever they want sort of thing. Uh, if they require the, the relocation of this infrastructure. Are we then not you know, liable to the landowners for, for having said we're not moving in that later on Metrolink says, oh yes, you are moving it? Is that a scenario that's been, been, been uh, uh, looked at? Um, so Councillor, I'm hoping maybe one of my colleagues can answer your question or I'm gonna have to ask you to ask it again because I lost. Sure. You, you froze, on, everybody froze on me for a couple of minutes there. I, I heard the start of it. I know oh. you were asking something about the Metro links. I think it was my internet connection, not yours, I think. Well, it um, turned off my video just in case while I, while I reframe it. I'm just wondering, because I, I did ask about this earlier, because it, it, it's an odd looking map because of this little panhandle that goes up uh, uh, to, to protect that infrastructure. But, but a deputy just raised a, the very thing that, that occurred to me after I asked about this earlier this week. If later on down the line, Metrolinx comes barreling through and, and uh, says, oh, you do have to move that infrastructure because we say so. They have a tendency to sort of act that way. Um, are, we, are we not then liable to the landowners who, who didn't get their zoning and then, then we end up relocating the infrastructure with Metrolinx anyway? Or, or does that mean just mean that if that if that happened, they could come in for rezoning? I mean, I don't want to answer liability questions, um, but I can say that through the young uh, subway extension work, I don't think 
they've landed on exact tunnel alignment at this point. Yeah. I would, I would say that the majority of the young subway is under the street itself as opposed to under the city's, like, like where it is now. So I'm uh, not sure whether or not that would, um, not sure that they're contemplating kind of going east of Young uh, when they they're run more the, likely to run keep the that alignment. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's still to be determined through more detailed engineering work with Metrolinx. Um, the liability question I would leave to to legal. Okay, is that a difficult question to ask of legal? Are they even connected to us? Due to our Rogers difficulty. I'm here. We have, do we have legal? Uh, oh, we do have legal. Okay. Can you repeat the question, Councilor Carroll? Well, I'm just wondering, you know, we've heard from the deputants. Uh, clearly, we're protecting this infrastructure, and so we've done a, a mid-rise zoning here in an unlikely place. It, it would be fair to assume you were going to get high-rise designation because it was going. it's going to have a subway station there. So... If we protect the infrastructure in zone mid-rise now, um, and then, you know, Metrolinx comes through, figures out their alignment, and, and decides to demand we relocate that infrastructure anyway, are, are we then, you know, sensitive to liability with the, the owners who didn't get the zoning that they were, were, um, were anticipating, or would they just come back for rezoning? I, I think that if um, the... If Metrolinks, first of all, to, through the chair, the city can make its own decision to protect its own resources. Could we be subject yeah. to a lawsuit for that later? It's entirely possible anyone can sue us for anything. And the standard is always whether we've fo followed reasonable policies and have a reasonable uh, basis for doing what we do. At a later point, the existing properties could certainly come back in for a rezoning on the grounds that there was a new situation and that the circumstances had changed. And that might be the way it was dealt with. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Carroll. Any other questions for staff? Um, I just have another question, just because I'm uh, unable to connect with Guy uh, directly, other than through this way. Would it uh, be helpful or not to um, uh, for you to have the opportunity to review any verbal? Um, or written submissions on this point or on other points, and uh, if you so choose, um, provide uh, supplementary um, information or direction to council. Is that would that be helpful or or not? Uh, are you ask uh, through the chair, sorry, council? Are you asking specific to the? The sewer, or uh, well, to general? that, or or anything else. That I don't want to. I, I don't want to create a lot of busy work, but um, I just want to kind of cover off all bases, so that um, I, I whether it's this item or another item that um, you know, I don't want to. Uh, you know, I I do understand that this uh, secondary plan needs to move forward, and I'll be doing that today. I just didn't know whether. Um, it's helpful or not to have a recommendation to um, to review submissions. What you know, probably most of them will be on this item on this on this aspect of it. But there may be something else as well that someone raised that um, we hadn't contemplated. Through the chair, I mean, we're always happy uh, for community input, and and it's something that we can do. Um, I mean, the plan has been through extensive consultation already, um, but um, we'd be happy to review. We, we have looked at the communications we were, that have been sent into community council. Obviously, um, some of them were, were yesterday, so we haven't had a lot of time to dive into them. So um, I'm happy to look at them in, in more detail and report, bring a supplementary report on any additional changes to community council. We can do that. To council directly to council, right? Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll add that to the uh, recommendations when it's time to do that. Um, if there's no more questions, I guess I can, I do have a number of um, additional recommendations, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, Councillor Fillin, you can speak and move your motions. Right, so um, 
so I, I'm, I'll ask Julie to put them up on the screen, but just because this one is not prepared in advance uh, or I haven't been able to send to her, so that uh, planning staff review all verbal and written submissions on this item and comment um, directly to City Council um, at its meeting of July 19th and 20th um, if they um, see the need to recommend any changes. Uh, Councillor Filney and the clerk has asked that we hold the item down because apparently there's a motion that you want to move that she doesn't have. Okay, and I'm unable to send it to her because this is the only device I have that's working, but um, um, I think uh, Catherine and my staff can probably yeah, we'll send them to her or, or, or planning staff. Okay, we're, we're going to figure out a way to get it. I don't know whether you could take a picture of it and show it on the screen or something. We'll figure it yeah. out, but unfortunately, okay. we have to hold the item down. Okay. So we're holding five down. What I'd like to do is go back up to the top of the agenda to 34.1 and see if David Huna from Boost Fields is available. Okay, great. David? Good morning. Good morning, Chairperson and members of New York Community Council. Uh, my name is David Hunt. I am a planner and partner at Bellsfields Inc. And we are the planning consultant for the applicant and I'm here on their behalf. Uh, I will be very brief and just wanted to say that we have reviewed the staff final staff report and are supportive of staff's recommendations. Um, and I also just wanted to take a moment to thank staff and Councillor Pasternak for all the efforts made to get to this point. Uh, we submitted prior to the pandemic, but throughout uh, we have had a very collaborative relationship with staff and engaged with the tenants and have had workshops with even the adjacent landowners to work through um, a lot and achieve a lot of the, you know, site specific and broader uh, goals, including a new public park and a potential new trail, as well as improvements for the existing tenants. So uh, we very uh, satisfied with the end result. Um, and, and again, thanks staff and, and you counselor for, for all your efforts. So with that, I just want to thank everyone for your time. Thank you. Great, thank you very much. I don't have any other deputations on this item. In, in light of our time restraints, I'll move staff recommendations. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. We're moving to uh, 34-2, 1350 Shepherd Avenue West, also known as the William Baker District. And we have a series of deputations. Um, is James Cox available? James Cox is on the line. Thank you for joining us. You have five minutes. I should point out to councillors, there's two motions with this item. One is a fairly technical one, and one is a general one, and it's been advanced circulated. James, you have five yes. minutes. Good morning, Council Pasternak, members of council. Uh, my name is James Cox. I'm a senior director with Canada Lands. I've been working with city staff since 2018 in support of the future William Baker neighborhood. I appear before you today in support of the overall recommendations of the city staff report. As part of my deputation support of the recommendations, Eric, Eric I and Monty. To a few slides. And before I do, I just want to acknowledge some of my colleagues who are in attendance at the council chambers this morning including David and Selmy, Eric Mark, and Sam Rahak. I'm going to share my presentation, if that's OK. Yes, uh, James, you have five minutes. So whatever you could squeeze into five minutes, that's great. Yeah. 
So to inform the plan and the recommendations before you today, Canada Lands went out to the community early in the process that was early in 2019. Our consultation included various formats, including open houses, uh, three pop-up events getting out to the community. We also did site walks. Uh, all of these included the councillor and his staff and city planning. And we pivoted through the pandemic to do eight virtual meetings in addition to the city's community consultation meeting that was held on March 30th. In my view, the plan has improved greatly through this engagement. A lot of credit is due to the many stakeholders who have been involved and community members, uh, many of which are, are with you today virtually or in person, and some who have submitted letters of support. All of this engagement has led to a great plan with a vision for a mixed use transit oriented community with a strong seniors component, connected parks, and protect, protection of the woodlot and the natural heritage. This is an important project for Canada Lands. It's an important project for the community and for the city of Toronto. And particularly when you look at its location across from the future Downsview Community Center, across from Downsview Park and adjacent to the Downsview Park TTC and GO station, interchange GO station. The project William Baker neighborhood really creates a complete community for all. And the plan reflects many community priorities, it includes affordable housing, including options for seniors and neighborhood focus with mixed use retail commercial, protected woodlot and natural heritage, new parks, open space and multi-use trails, and new pedestrian bridge, which connects Downsview Park to the new neighborhood, support for the Downsview Community Center, plans for a Toronto Catholic District School, uh, an elementary school in the north end of the site, and public art. Submission materials reflect the refinements based on the community feedback and based on staff comments. And as mentioned, we've received and the city has received numerous letters of support from the community members and the stakeholders, which I think demonstrate the extensive consultation we've done. Canaland supports the overall conclusions, recommendations of the staff report, and we look forward to working with staff on the implementation of this plan. I want to thank city staff for all of its work uh, over the last few years. And I want to give a special thanks to Councillor Pasternak and his staff who have been working tirelessly on this project since day one uh, out in the community, working very hard. And it's it's been a true collaboration in that respect. So that does it for my deputation. I'm, I'm here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cox. Other than me, any other questions? So, um, James, under this plan, uh, do we shrink park, uh, city park land or expand park, park land? We, we are expanding public park land. Uh, in addition to protecting the woodlot and the natural heritage, we're proposing an ecological park in the center of the site. We're also proposing two public parks, which weren't in the Downsview Area Secondary Plan. So we have a park in the south as part of these phase one lands, which connects the Downsview Park to the William Baker neighborhood. And we've also proposed a park in the north part of the site, a central park serving residents in the area uh, and existing residents. So we, we've exceeded the, the parkland dedication requirements in that respect. Now the woodlot is a is a precious resort uh, resource in the area. I'm just wondering what measures you've taken to make sure that that is protected. That's a great question, Councillor. We've uh, I think it really started uh, with work our ecologists have been doing since I believe it was 2006 around the woodlot. Uh, we, we did some interim landscaping work to open it up to the public uh, and also to protect it. And, and we've been working with staff uh, on a terms of reference for an ecological management plan, uh, which we've initiated work on and which will really guide protection of the woodlot. And, and a big piece of that will be about educating the public as well in, in terms of the work that's going to be done and how it's best protected. Now, Seniors Village is very much part of our, the vision of this land. Um, are you building a seniors-friendly community? 
Uh, absolutely. I, I think our intent from, from day one and based on the, the feedback we were getting from elected officials, from community members, was really about uh, supporting seniors. And, and our intent is to deliver a continuum of care and a seniors component. So that would include uh, anything from uh, retirement residents, memory care, through to affordable seniors options, uh, as well as seniors community space. So very much that's uh, a big part of our objective. So when I came to office, there was about 950,000 uh, set aside for the community center. Um, after this, how, may, how much will we have? I believe the, the recommendations in front of you today are proposing a cash contribution through Section 37 of, of $7 million towards that Downsview Community Center. Uh, so I think it will be quite uh, an increase to that uh, to that fund. Okay. Great. Thank you, James. Thank you, Council. Bruce Hall. Can you hear me? Yes, Mr. Hall. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sure. Um, I was here basically as a backup today. I'm not going to take much time. Um, James was able to get on, but uh, we echo um, Mr. Cox's comments in uh, all respect. This district plan and zoning bylaw will provide for a complete community that conforms to and is consistent with and will implement the Downsview Secondary Plan and we support uh, the staff recommendation uh, with the requested uh, revisions. Thank you very much. That was concise. Any questions for the deputy? No. Thank you, Bruce. Elizabeth Jassim. And you're in the chamber. Thank you very much. So Elizabeth, I understand, and there's a problem with the slides. Do you want to use the overhead? Uh, Elizabeth, while you're setting up, I'm going to listen to um, Palmero. To Carlo, Palmero, thanks so much for coming. No, please. Yeah. Please, yeah, please proceed. Can someone please help with that microphone? I thought we were going to hear Palmero first while Elizabeth's setting up.
can we set Elizabeth uh, at the other microphone with the overhead and let Palmyra depute? You're gonna speak together. Okay. Test, test. Hello. Unfortunately, I don't have access to our few slides. My name is Elizabeth Jason, and I'm with Pamela DiCarpio, and we are coming from York Center Senior Steering Committee. We have few beautiful slides to show you who we are and how important work we do fourth year now, but we cannot access our slides. Um, we are here for two reasons. One reason is that we are absolutely endorsing the district plan, which we achieve, the which is which achieve agreement between Canada Lands Carpani and the City of Toronto. We are very happy that we are proceeding this, and we've. We think and we hope that this will be obviously approved next week by City Council. We have few items where we would like to put additional attention on top of this, what we are endorsing, but I cannot show you because of this technical difficulties. I will try to read. Uh, what I actually uploaded last night. So first of all, it's about affordable housing component for this William Baker part. We would like to ask kindly to reduce the amount. You, have, you can read what I sent and let's discuss this. And another item is that we would like to put your attention, obviously, into 
seniors housing and different options to be developed the way community to wish to develop. And this is where I'm getting to our second item. I use this opportunity that I'm honored to represent York Center community seniors and all adults who are living here. I don't know if you realize that our Ward 6, which is York Center at the same time, has very big percentage of older adults and seniors. I'm not sure about statistics to date, but it's very like 40% or something. So we as a community members realize that we are not represented properly or too slow by the city or other you know, institutions who should represent us. And we form our nonprofit organization to represent and work hard towards to better outcomes, which will be bringing really quality of life improvements to all seniors where we live. Today, and we actually submitted a year ago to the city of Toronto, our vision for Seniors Health Village, which we would like to be a part of creation because our idea is, which is actually quite common in other countries, that seniors and citizens are doing things together with the city. We don't want to be and ask somebody to do something for us. We want it to be in it, in this process from the beginning, what something will be created. And here I will take a few seconds to thank you very much, James Cox and Canada Lens Company and Councillor Pasternak and his staff people to understanding better and trying to help us with our mission. We need to have absolutely more work done ahead of us. So that's why we think that it's important that we are endorsing today and working what we achieved today. But in my document, which I sent last night, it's the area where we need to improve our communication. We would like to have access to Section 37 designated funds. And we think that as a city, city and citizens, we need to talk about how community can benefit directly from that. Thank you. We would like to say, more about our presentation. So maybe next time we would like to have a time with North York, you know, community council for us. Thank you. Great, thank you very much, Elizabeth, for that wonderful presentation. Um, Palmyra. Basically, all I wanted to add was that we are quite happy with the plan and uh, look forward to seeing a completion. Uh, phase one, hopefully it'll be around for phase two. Thank you. I, I'm sorry, I was distracted for a minute, but I wanted to thank both of you for coming to North York Community Council today and all the hard work you did on this application. So I thank you, I thank you very much. So a question of the deputy? Uh, Councilor Cole? I thought I heard uh, the deputy, the first one, was Elizabeth, was it? Yes. 
said she wanted to reduce something. What did she want to reduce? So what do you want to reduce? Elizabeth, did you want to take the mic? Yes. Okay. Uh, in this application, the city requires greater than 20% of affordable housing, uh, you know, units. We would like to ask kindly to reduce that number. Why would you want to reduce the number or the amount of affordable housing? It's a, for what I reason? Know that, I know that city needs a lot, lots of affordable apartments. And in, in general, we agree with this. But in this area, and this is what I'm hearing from community members, we actually had a meeting on Tuesday night for three and a half hours. And I would like to tell you that surrounding buildings this area is loaded with many affordable units. So this is the concern community has. And so what are they afraid of with more more affordable housing? I'm not sure why they wouldn't want more. Well, Pamela, maybe you can say you live there. I'm uh, sorry, what we were asking for was a reduction. Because when you look at a project, this is only phase one, but there's phase two coming in as well for total units of approximately 4,000. If you're looking at 20%, that's quite a large number. We already have quite a bit of affordable housing there. And there's more projects coming up that I know of. We're just, Worried that we're going to end and date the area with affordable housing. Well, isn't that a good thing to have an area with a lot of affordable housing? But why does it have to be loaded in one area? In the city of Toronto, we have lots of room in our areas too. So this is public land that is now being developed, and you're saying you want to restrict the amount of affordable housing. I mean, there's what, there's 100,000 people on the waiting list for affordable housing. Okay, I understand. So, so what do you got against the affordable housing? I still don't understand. We can discuss this later in details when many people can come to the meeting. Simply we are limited today with people and we will muzzle for two and a half years. So we are taking this opportunity to announce the first times about our concerns and absolutely counselor, we think that we should discuss that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Councillor Cole. Councillor Carroll. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, 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 Mr. Chair. With respect to my, my colleague uh, uh, just before, there, we, we actually don't have a waiting list of 100,000 for affordable housing. Council at the next, at the, the next uh, uh, council session will, for the first time, adopt an item that for affordable housing, which is not social housing, uh, there will be half waiting list, half lottery. And I'm wondering if it was made clear to, to the residents, maybe they could tell us if they're crystal clear. And I, my read of the, uh, the report is that this is the type of housing we're talking about. We're talking about affordable housing where there will be income minimums and income maximums. And so we're talking about 20% of these units being available to hardworking people who can prove their income but can't afford market value housing at this time. And I'm wondering what the objection would be to 20% of the people in this neighborhood being hardworking people. Exactly, I agree with, with you absolutely, Councillor. And this is what I exactly said to the community last night on Tuesday meeting we had. Simply, we didn't know that we will be actually talking about this. Last, last Monday we were informed we don't have enough time. We never were given time to organize and meet with people and explain more. York Center Senior Steering Committee actually works very hard 
to educate people on this subject, what you just mentioned. There is a huge difference between social housing and affordable housing. And I totally agree. What I'm asking and honorably representing today community in limited people amount with me, because we had never enough time to prepare ourselves properly to this discussion. That's why what I said to Councillor Call, let's meet again because we need more time to discuss with community at large. Um, uh, those are my questions, Mr. Chair. I'll, uh, I'll want to be on the speaker's list. Okay, thank you, Councillor Carroll. I, th I think I better jump in here as well. Uh, the, uh, are you aware that the affordable housing model is for nurses, IT professionals, uh, lawyers who are just starting out, seniors on fixed incomes? It is not social housing in the traditional sense. I'm just wondering whether you're aware of that. Okay, uh, S Councillor, uh, exactly, I agree. I was asked to represent committee at large at, from York Center, and this is what I'm doing today. I'm mentioning this point that we need to return to our work and work together better on communication, and that's why I also attach a few more pages how we think this area for improving process, communication process could be improved for next months and years. Thanks. Okay, I, th I think between now and council, we should regroup. Um, I didn't know about this meeting. Uh, I would have been happy to attend, uh, but, but let's continue the conversation. And certainly just a reminder, this is only phase one. Uh, we don't know uh, what the plan is for phase two. But let's let's continue the conversation. Any other questions for the deputants? Uh, Derek Rumble. Monty Hardy. Gord Cohen. Okay, so if they join us uh, between now and uh, adjournment, we'd be happy to uh, hear them and will vary procedure to make that happen. Uh, so they have they have a they have some time to join us. We just can't wait all day. Questions for staff? I I have a couple. Staff are available? Through the chair, yes, we are. There we go. Hustler. Thank you, thank you, David. As as far as the city's interests and concern, do you feel that the best package for for this future community and and protecting the interests of the city have been secured in this agreement? Through the chair, I would say that we've been uh, very successful in terms of the package that you're referring to. We are obviously getting a substantial amount of um, community benefits for the community center, for affordable housing, for future bridge, public art. Uh, so it is quite a substantial um, achievement for this community. 
Now in Downsview, you can't go too far without a debate about parkland. Does this plan reduce or expand city parkland? Through the chair, uh, the parkland dedication is quite substantial here as well. Um, I think as, as you're, you may be aware, there's uh, over 18,000 square meters that is being provided uh, as part of the parkland dedication. And then there's also an over dedication of over 24,000 square meters. So quite a substantial amount. Now the woodlot is a precious resource. Are you confident that any builder on the site would be prevented from damaging it or harming it in any way? Through the chair, I think through our zoning controls that we've put in place, we have zoned the woodlot as open space and there are areas around the woodlot that provide additional buffer. So yes, I would agree with that. Let's talk about the affordable housing. Now, is the, is the housing going to be run by Toronto Community Housing? Through the chair, I think that that is a question that uh, will still have to be determined as to who the housing providers will be as the various blocks move forward for um, procurement. And uh, I, I suspect uh, the CLC will not be actually running the housing themselves. Is this house affordable housing under the housing model now? Housing now model? where we have professionals who can't uh, afford a down payment or can't get market entry, hardworking people. Yeah, through the chair, I mean, the affordable housing units that are targeted for this phase of the development uh, will be uh, provided at a much um, lower market rent, 80% uh, average market rent. So whoever qualifies for that um, will will have a, an option to apply for it. Now this community has been waiting for over 20 years for a community center and daycare. Does this plan account for that? Through the chair, perhaps I can turn that question over to uh, one of my colleagues, uh, Perry, who's also on the line that has had some further discussions about the timing of the community center. I thought I thought Perry was on, but maybe he is also having some trouble uh, given the, the Rogers network. He might be a Rogers comes customer. Yes. <clears throat> um, okay. So sorry, Councillor, could you repeat the question? Yeah, let me let me find a question you can answer. Um, <laughs> so um, seniors village, um, that's that's a, a key component. How do we move forward under this plan to make sure there's a seniors housing option. So uh, through the chair, I would say that right now under the draft zoning by a lot that we have provided, uh, seniors housing is a permitted use. Uh, or um, So uh, I think, again, this will be a question down the road as to um, how CLC disposes of the, the lands and whether or not they will uh, attract a specific senior housing provider. Okay, so that's an ongoing conversation. Okay, so that's the end of my questions. Any other questions for staff? Speakers? Okay, I'll just speak for a couple of minutes. You know, when this started coming forward, I was very concerned that this site was going to be developed. And I and I do do see uh, many of the concerns going forward. But the way we approach it was an opportunity, an opportunity to secure more parkland to protect the woodlot forever, to get 
a major step forward in a community center and daycare to create a seniors friendly village to invest in public art and to have affordable housing options for those who can't get them. And although we didn't get everything we wanted, I think we came pretty close. And it's important for everybody to remember these are federal lands and they were gonna be developed. And we either had a choice of fight them tooth and nail for years and years, have the, have the application go to appeal, and then once again, have the community short change. Or we could work with them and try and find out, try and find the best deal that works for Canada Lands and the city of Toronto and the local neighborhood. And I would like to thank uh, the local community, including the York Center, Center Senior Steers Committee, and of course, all the individuals who contributed. I'd also like to thank my staff who worked on this application for many years, and of course, city planning who represented and defended the interests of the city. Now, even though we have a, a proposal today and a staff report, there's lots of work to do. And I would simply um, work with the community, Canada Lands and the city planning department to make sure that this only has positive outcomes. I do have two motions, which I should have uh, presented at the top of my discussion. Uh, one is a, um, a more technical motion, and this uh, was the result of late night negotiations, um, which tried to iron out some of the last minute differences between the city and Canada lands and the federal government. So it's been advanced circulated and I think that this does the best we can in finding a compromise and solution on many key issues. There is a second motion which ensures that as we go forward, the community remains as part of the conversation and that we do everything we can to make sure any construction on this site respects the woodlot and the natural heritage of the site. It commits us to affordable rental and ownership and as well as a seniors village but it commits us to long-term involvement in the design and shaping of this community. I'm also happy to say my day started with the ribbon cutting at a new fire station uh, with the mayor and the chief, chief of fire services uh, just south of this site. And it adheres to the true, truism that safety comes first. So we have a new state-of-the-art fire station, open, operational, and ready to protect existing neighborhoods and future neighborhoods. And that concludes my remarks. Any other speakers on the item? Councillor Carroll. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mr. Chair. Um, I, I just we 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 gave your 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 uh, constituents a rough ride there, I think, in our questions. But I I think it raises a, a an issue that we still have a long way to go to make sure that people understand um, that we need everywhere along the spectrum types of housing. 
Uh, we need our social housing. We're investing a huge amount in repairing it for those tenants. And uh, we're this very council session, we're going to be looking at an item on how to make more efficient the waiting list on it. But we're also uh, going to be introducing a more fair way of making sure that the hardworking people who qualify for affordable housing have a way of getting at it. And, uh, and so, you know, what we're looking at are uh, our neighbors that really deserve as much as we're investing in social housing, the people who are getting caught out, even though they, they do have jobs, it just happens to be a very, you know, unrealistic and expensive time for housing. Um, and that uh, they will make great neighbors for seniors. Many of them work in service industries. People who qualify for affordable, affordable housing often spend their working lives working with seniors. And so uh, um, I, I think what, what we learned today, uh, hearing from, from your residents, that they engaged in a great process, but that we're still not doing a good job of communicating that middle need that middle level affordable need. And we can't reduce the number. We, are, we built those policies because of the need. So we, we, we can't reduce the numbers. Once the built form and the number of units overall is set, we want to be able to, on a percentage basis, uh, make sure that we're, we're filling that need. Um, but I, you know, I, I, I stand uh, just to say to you that after all that process, it shouldn't be on you alone as the local councillor to continue to communicate to people what it will mean to have those units in the neighborhood. I think it's really all the council's job and the mayor's job to as many times a week as we can make sure that people understand the whole spectrum of housing need and, and uh, what it means to meet it so that they will embrace it and welcome it into their communities. And uh, I'm offering myself up. We, we've all got to help make sure that your community understands that as this happens in the William Baker neighborhood. Thanks, those are my comments, Mr. Chair. Great, thank you, uh, Councillor Carroll. And on a personal note, the, the third of my four children have left the city for cheaper housing elsewhere. So unless we're going to stop the flood, uh, that we have to we have to act. All right, um, we, yeah, so the, there's one of the motion that had a last minute deletion. We, we took, we took something out at the advice of legal. So I think we're all good to go. If you want to see that on the screen again. Oh, Councillor Carroll. I, I was just, I was just voting. I'm ready to vote. Oh, oh I thought you had <laughs> questions for the mover. Okay, great. No, no. I was getting nervous. Okay. <laughs> um, first motion. All those in favor? Opposed. That carries. The second motion. It's the more technical one. I don't see it on the screen, but all those in favor? There we go. Oops. And for the information of deputants, these motions um, protect the community and and iron out some difference, differences uh, between the city and Canada lands and makes for a better community friendly proposal. All those in favor? Opposed? That carries. The item is amended. All those in favor? Opposed? That carries.
Yes, yeah, so we held on item five, Young Street North Planning Study. And I believe Councillor Finn Fillion, your motion is ready. Uh, yes, thank you. So just by way of introduction to all of this, I'll just say this, um, <clears throat> this has been in the works uh, for so long that uh, former Councillor Shiner and I used to squabble over it when he had uh, one side of Young Street and I had the other. Um, so um, anyway, we're finally, finally um, have a have it ready to go. Um, it is long overdue. It is absolutely necessary, um, not only because the subway station's being built, but because we are being flooded with applications for the area and uh, really need to establish some um, clear rules, some uh, guidance for uh, people who wish to develop uh, in this area which we hope they will do, um, but uh, to do so uh, responsibly and following the city's uh, rules and guidelines. So um, um, I think we've covered all bases on this, but in case there's anything, like for example, the issues that came up today, there, um, you know, I can understand why people are concerned that um, uh, we're not designating a, a, a small section of Young Street for uh, high density right on Young, but uh, the fact is that uh, there is a um, very large uh, set of infrastructure, sewer pipes and the like, uh, that is running underneath the laneway, and you just simply can't build on top of it and you can't move it. So... Um, it um, it's that's just uh, that's just uh, an unfortunate fact that will limit the development potential for the sites on Young that are abutting that. But um, just as a you know, belt and suspenders um, have uh, asked staff to look at all the submissions, including the ones made verbally today, and uh, they have the opportunity to. Uh, recommend any changes um, in a supplementary report to council. And I'd like to thank the staff for uh, uh, for all their work on this. I have completely lost count of the meetings that I've had on this, like dozens. And uh, the, um, the staff have been uh, like really um, um, good to work with and in, in kind of plowing through all the issues. So a uh, big thank you um, to um, uh, especially uh, Guy and Victoria who've been uh, terrific on this, but to all the all the staff from all the different divisions um, who've been involved. Thank you, Councillor Fillion. It, it sounds like you've been working on this since since uh, the um, Second World War. Okay. Yeah, or the. <laughs> Any since, other the shine, on the item? since the Shiner Wars. <laughs> the Shiner Wars, oh yes. Um, any other speakers on the item? Okay, we just have the one motion. We can put it on the screen. Uh, there's actually a series of, um, I think Julie's got this one that I just added, but then there was some oh. others that had been okay. um, so coming from staff. Two? They have two. Yeah, and the second is a, a longer one. Okay. Uh, so there's the motion on the screen. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. The next motion? All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. The item is amended. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Item number six, 3358, 3364, Bayview Avenue. I have one deputant, a David McKay. We have David. Mr. McKay. Okay. 
Good morning, uh, Mr. Chair, members of committee. My name is David Mackay. I'm a registered professional planner with MHBC. I'm just here to thank uh, staff for the hard work of getting this application moved forward. Uh, we've addressed a, a number of the concerns that the community raised through the public consultation process, including dealing with uh, appropriate transition to the lots to the west, uh, including um, additional resident uh, as well as visitor parking areas. And uh, we believe that um, this uh, proposal will be a, a good addition to the community uh, as shown by the plans. And we've incorporated a number of those restrictions of transition and whatnot into the bylaws. And so I, I just simply want to thank staff uh, for their support, uh, specifically Jenny Cho, uh, with regards to this proposal and request um, approval today and happy to answer any questions that may arise. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions for the deputant? No? no. Questions for staff? No. Speakers? Um, yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm going to move this to council without recommendation. This, uh, it frankly surprised me that this one was on the agenda. The uh, last community consultation on this was uh, um, about three or three years ago or more. Um, and, um, you know, so I have been scrambling uh, this week to contact the residents who had concerns to make sure they were aware that this had come forward again and review any changes. And, uh, you know, that kind of has been happening even today, but with the Rogers shutdown, um, um, I think the best thing to do is just forward this to council so that there's an opportunity to make changes at council and proceed with this, or uh, if it gets too complicated, then to refer it back to community council to deal with in January. But uh, just to keep both options open, I'll uh, move that it be forwarded to uh, council without recommendations. Okay, thank you, Councillor Fillion. Any other speakers on the item? 346, 3358, 3364 Bayview Avenue. Moved without recommendations to council. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Item 347, a series of addresses on Bogert and Ponce. And we have, is David Huna from Boost Fields available? David? Yes, 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 Mr. Right, Chair. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. You have five minutes. Thank you. Um, yes, my name is David Hun, and uh, again, I'm a planner and partner at Bell Sills Inc. And we are the planning consultant for this applicant as well. Um, I just wanted to say very quickly, I uh, won't take up too much of your time. Um, that I wanted to say um, that we have reviewed the staff report and are supportive of staff's recommendation. And again, just wanted to thank staff. Hey, John. And Phil. Yeah, so I'm having trouble responding, but I I don't know whether or not. Councillor Fillion, if you could put your mic on mute. Yeah, I just wanted to thank staff and Councillor Fillion for all the efforts made to get to this point. Uh, this has been a long standing and complicated process with a very long history. Uh, but staff have been excellent to work with and to work with through the tenant matters. And as a result, uh, we feel that the resulting proposal for replacement and tenant assistance is appropriate. And in the end, I think the tenants uh, that return and the ones that stay on site will be happy to return to improve conditions, as well as new community amenities, such as a new large public park. So again, I won't take up too much of your time. Thank you. And um, I look forward to uh, seeing the result. Thank you. Thank you, David. Vitala Zilberstein. Thank you for joining us and thank you for your patience. You have five minutes. Dear members of uh, North York Community Council, my name is Vitala Zilberstein. And I have been living with my family 
in building three to five workers since May 98. And according to my contract with the owner of the apartment block, I regularly pay my rent in full and on time. Together with many residents of the house, I'm categorically against the demolition of the house and our eviction from it. In January 2020, a group of activists, including myself, all the residents of the building, brought a public letter to the office of the entire land tribunal, signed by 390 residents of our building. We, the subscribers, were categorically against the demolition of the building and our eviction. In that letter, we indicated reasons why the landlord project was destructive and catastrophic for the environment of the city. Earl Bays Park, the Western River, Lake Ontario and the area around for, for infrastructure of the city and city transit system. It is for these important reasons that the North York Community Council and the City Council of Toronto denied the landlord in 2017. We don't understand why the North York Community Council and the City Council of Toronto accepted the new landlord project in 2021 with, the, with no significant changes except the de decrease of the number of new apartments from 1600 to 1400. Has the environment in North York and Toronto improved over these four years? Has the transport system made progress in North York for the better? Has traffic be become less stressful since 2017? There is, there is but one answer, absolutely the opposite. I'm strongly against the project, against the eviction, because I choose this the particular place in the map on convenient living for my family, the park, access to TTC, the center for Russian-speaking uh, community, shops, sports, facilities, libraries, school, kindergarten, swimming pool, sauna, etc. I choose this particular apartment with balcony, with underground garage, exactly this configuration and area, exactly on this floor with a swimming pool and exactly this overlooking the park. I have not violated the point, any point in, in my agreement with the landlord. I'm turning 70 today uh, and I do not want to expose myself and the members of my family to any problems associated with moving to, the, to some remote places particularly because I, like many residents of our house, have pets. Where I can find even temporary similar apartment in this area, a similar building where pets are allowed? And who will give me a personal right, written guarantee that the, this so-called temporary eviction will not last five, six years, but only three years as they promised? It appears from the letter from, from city, uh, city Council from North York, June 16, 2022, that according to the City Act, City Toronto Act 2006, the demolition of homes rented out with six or more units is prohibited without obtaining permission from the city, and that the City Council's decision on the demolition of rented houses is not subject to appear to the Ontario Land Tribunal. From all of this above, it turns out to be a complete absolutely absurdity, a complete paradox, since the actions of the City Council are completely contrary to this law. On July 14, 2017, the City rejected landlord's project, but at the same time went to considering the rejected project. And all these strange manipulations in the city with landlord's project after the notice of refusal from, from July 14, 2017, are very 
the you have to. Uh, excuse me, sir. Tell us me and excuse me, sir. You're you're over five minutes. Did you want to just wrap up? You you can take another, you know, few seconds to wrap up. May I ask a few minutes because two serious documents? No, no, you can't have a few minutes. Okay. But stay there. Could, stay there. There's some questions. Why, why not me? Yeah. We need to, to listen. People must know what, what is written here. Well, would they would they like to speak? Did you want to speak? All right. Did you register with the clerk? Yes. Okay. You'll have your chance. So I have questions. Um, Where can you? Has has the city presented its its rent? Sorry, its r renters movement plan, where they help you with cash compensation, finding a new place, the right to return to the new building, any other incidentals. Have you had that information? I yes, I, I, I knew about this, I know, but I don't like this. I don't like this because, not because of me or my own person. I don't like this uh, project because it, it, this process is very dangerous for city, for nature, for the park, for river, for people of Toronto and North York. This is main reason for transport system system in, in North York. In uh, in 2017, it was meeting in school at the April 4, and this Mr. John Filion was uh, leader of meeting. I said to him, "What changes came from 2010 when the?" Landlord uh, give to city first project. What the what the difference between uh, transport system and in in 2010 and 2017 improved? The nature environment improved. The same questions now. Right. Okay. From 17 to 2021. Okay. Um, any other questions for the deputant? May I continue my my. No, no, you, you were at five minutes, but your your neighbors can speak. Thank you. Uh, is this Alina? Lelia? Lelia. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm going to speak shortly. Uh, who's, who sent invitation to this meeting to apartments? Oh, sorry. Sorry. Um, who's this meeting to apartments at 325 Bogart Avenue. Who wants the tenants to be absent at this meeting? Where are the names and addresses of the tenants were taken from? We don't trust in these people now, and even more so, we are not sure that uh, their action related to this process will be uh, legitimate uh, uh, later. Has the project of first eviction and them uh, bringing people back to apartments of equal uh, value in the new condo building been confirmed? We can expect that any legal support and or control from the city out to um, authorities, authorities uh, while the tenants are moved. Will 
any official be appointed to control the eviction process. The ones of the of uh, oh, thank you very much for us to apply to the eviction procedure. Obligations are not uh, abided by. We want to have written contract in the points of this project and affect the tenants who have lived in the building for a long time. Tenants at 325 Bogart Avenue were shown some bright moving uh, prospect, but they don't trust in that. They are ready to uh, consider offers to the move uh, to other buildings that belong to the current landlord with the same rental price. That would ensure the rise of the rent. Uh, conditions in the building 325 Bogart Avenue are uh, deter deteriorated. Oh, sorry. <laughs> deteriorating after years. Some parts of building are in critical state. So we are not sure that uh, the landlord is not going to kick the tenants out before the uh, predetermined terminate, uh, time. Tenants of 325 Bogart Avenue think that state in the building and the management's attitude are um, aimed uh, at making people leave. What the city, wouldn't city authorities uh, like to look at that conditions? Are people living in the building now? What wouldn't they like to see the real situation? It was, it was not for nothing that invitations to meeting uh, were uh, addressed to uh, false name. So um, I want to say about like I don't know where the names coming from. Lots of people don't get uh, these letters because it was um, somebody's name. People leave like we were our group. It's only zero zero one percent of all tenants in the building. So people live here. Uh, people who um, came to the meeting live in the building 25 years, 22 years, 10, 13 years. And all this time, we have uh, our name on the, um, this address. So uh, I don't know who, but they hope that with the same people would would wouldn't not open letter addressed to other names so that's why many people didn't come to this meeting and this person before me he said everything what all people want to say to the council to the city because we low-income people most of uh, building 99 percent low-income people and we can't get any lawyer and uh, we can get uh, apartments um, higher price. So um, the situation uh, that uh, uh, we have right now, it's very terrible situation. It's 418 apartments where live in one apartment can live um, two families, depends of uh, size of uh, uh, unit. So, um, we want help with our situation and all uh, complaints that person supposed to say before me so uh, that person can't have a five minutes because 400 families in one letter want to say everything what they want to say um, and i ask you and uh, because many people didn't know even about this meeting, I want to ask you to listen to this previous uh, person because he um, 
have all information from our community, from our neighbors, 325 Bogart Avenue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Are there any questions for the deputant? I'm going to call the next deputant and uh, then pass the chair over to Councillor Carroll for a few minutes. Alina Litvin. Alina Litvin. No. Vlad Brykhlov. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. You have five minutes. Yeah. Um, just try to make this real brief. Uh, I'm a tenant at the proposed site. Um, Just here to try to understand as to what's going on, what's going to happen to the property. And I have a lot of questions about the proceedings. And I, I also want to point out uh, what this lady previously had said. Like, good job to the person who wrote the letter because they addressed the name to like a, a random person. So I think 98% of the people just threw out the letter. Um, and the letter was very poor uh, in terms of describing uh, the proceedings of the land development. Um, I'll just I'll just get straight straight to the point. I need that place for five more years so I can come back to school and do out a degree. So this development is threatening my future, and I have a lot of questions in terms of possible financial assistance that I can get so I can be a full-time student and somehow still live a life. And I don't know who to ask. I don't know what's going to happen after this meeting. I don't know what discussions are going to take place. Um, just don't understand. If somebody could please answer some questions or send out a proper project memo to the building so everybody can attend and cumulatively ask questions and uh, engage in conversation. Because all I have here in the letter, um, I can email or call a person, but I'd like to be in person and have that conversation live, not with somebody over video. That's so, yeah. so, so, Mr. Brikolov, is it? Yeah, just, you can call me Vlad, B-L-A-D. Okay, so Vlad, uh, unfortunately, we can't answer your questions right now because deputations is not, it's not Q&A. It's not an opportunity for you to ask questions. Uh, uh, the, the local counselor can question you. And I, uh, well, that sounds unfair. That, that's, the, uh, that's the procedure. Um, but, uh, you know, I have a feeling that, that in his uh, questions and remarks afterwards, he may get at how you, how you might get that information. But you're, you're, you're right now, it's just your remarks. And then when you're finished your remarks, the, the local counselor may want to ask you some questions as a result of that. Unfortunately, it's not a back and forth at this moment. But you do have a couple of minutes left to speak if you if you want to continue and make clear what your concerns are. Um, I think I already made my concerns clear. Okay, okay. Well, it would have been nice to specify in the letter how this goes, you know? It's okay. Just a little bit lost. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Um, it's true that the statutory notice format that is meant to be somewhat universal uh, uh, does leave something to be desired. Um, I, I'm just going to go through the names one more time, counselors, because a couple of people 
did not answer before. Uh, we've heard from both fields. Um, uh, I think the name Elena uh, Litvin was called and we, we didn't hear from that person. Okay, and uh, and Lilia uh, Paramiba. So I think that that is the deputation oh, list. Oh, it's sorry, our... Councilor Kara. Uh, it's the clerk. We actually added three new speakers. Oh, okay. And I see that Mr. Chair is back in his seat. So if those are handwritten on paper, he's best yeah. I'll hand it over to deal to with them. them. Okay. Yes. Okay. So thank you, thank you, Councilor Carroll. Yes, the chair is back in his chair. So we're back. We're up to the additional speakers that I believe yes. you have uh, written in hand. Oh, there we go. Yeah, no, I have so many chairs here. I think I have a dining room set. Uh, Vlad. Oh, wait a minute. Vladimir Ruff? Vla oh, oh, it's a different Vlad. Sorry about that. Um, I just want to briefly tell you one, one set. Um, no? It's going to that new building gonna overlook uh, the ravine it's much gonna be taller and when you cycle you know on a ravine have a walk you want to escape from the city you want to be surrounded by nature and that will ruin it and i give you one negative example uh, construction of a new building that's still under construction on uh, Leslie, just north of Shepherd. It's overlooking the Don Valley uh, Trail. You go in a green corridor and then bang, you know, that uh, big flat building, you know, it just ruin your whole attitude. And we don't need that. Thank you very much. Thank you for your deputation. Any questions for the deputant? Stephen Dobo? Hi, Stephen. Thank you for coming. Dobos. Dobo. D O S. D O B O S. Sorry. Um, will the councillors be coming back or just those, just the two of you that I'll be speaking to? Uh, that is a good question. We do have quorum. Sorry, I just stepped out of the view of the camera, but I, 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 I am in the room. Sorry. Yeah, we do we have quorum, and here comes the local councillor. So to continue on from the letter from uh, Mr. Zilberstein, it appears from your letter dated June 16, 2022, that according to the City of Toronto Act of 2006, the demolition of homes rented out with more or six or more units is prohibited without obtaining permission from the city and that the city council's decision on the demolition of rented houses is not subject to appeal to the Ontario Land Tribunal. From all of the above, it turns out to be a complete absurdity uh, paradox since the actions of the City Council are completely contrary to this law. On July 14, 2017, the City rejected the landlord's project, but at the same time went on considering the rejected project. And all these manipulations in the city with the landlord's project after the notice of refusal by the city council from July 14th, 2017, caused me personally and many residents of the house to seriously doubt all these strange uh, manipulations with the project in the city correspond to the letter of law, that they require closer attention and careful in-depth consideration and analysis. It has become known on September 20, 2021, the representative of the landlord applied to the city council 
with a special secret offer. The landlord offered $9 million in donations to the city. And after that, on October 1st, 2021, the city accepted his project. Following the strange logic, it turns out that a very rich tycoon can buy a piece of land in the center of Toronto with a few hundred million to the city as a donation. And after that, build a nuclear reactor perilous for people on this site or install uh, giant sculptures. Um, let us continue. So, and it is not clear to me how the landlord on August 3rd, 2017, was able to appeal to the Ontario Land Tribunal because the Act of 2006 expressly states that the decision of the city on projects to demolish rental houses are not subject to appeal to the OLT. By the way, as far as I know, there is no official document on the final decision of the OLT file number PL170905 regarding this project. There is also an attachment to public letter to Ontario Land Tribunal, a six page document was attached. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Any questions for the deputant? Thank you very much. Vladimir Roth, we've heard already. Vladimir Roth, we heard. And Brian Kalov. Yeah, we've heard. Bry Kolov? Okay, we're done with deputations. Questions for staff? Um, is there someone here from the rental housing um, office? I highly doubt it. Uh, yeah, through the chair. My name is Christine Ono. I'm a senior planner in housing policy. Uh, my colleague, Greg Haynes, wasn't able to connect this morning due to... I do apologize. Yes. Yeah, okay, and I can probably deal with this if you're not familiar with the background, Christine, but I'm just wondering, for the benefit of the uh, people who spoke today, if you could... Um, summarize what consultation has taken place with tenants and um, the um, uh, and in general the protections that will be available to them and any final uh, work that st still needs to be done on that before the buildings could actually be demolished. Sure, through the chair, happy to answer those questions. Um, the report outlines that a tenant consultation meeting was held on May 19th of this year um, to speak with tenants about uh, a status update on the development application and to speak to the proposed tenant relocation and assistance plan. The report outlines that tenants will be provided um, with the right to return to a replacement unit that has the same number of bedrooms and is a similar size as their existing unit and they'll return to a similar rent to what they currently pay. Additionally, uh, the applicant will be providing tenants with what we call rent gap payments. So um, compensation to bridge the gap between the rent that tenants currently pay and then the market area rent for each month that they are um, displaced as a result of of the development and before they're able to return to a replacement unit. Depending on um, some of the phasing that occurs for the development, there may be opportunities for tenants to move either directly to a replacement rental unit on site or um, to move temporarily to an alternative rental unit on this site um, while their replacement unit is being constructed. Uh, special needs tenants, so tenants, um, 
um, above a certain age will also be, be given additional financial compensation and all tenants will receive moving allowances if, if they're asked to, once they're requested to move for, for the redevelopment. Um, following city council's decision on, on the application, if it is approved, uh, the city will work with the applicant to undertake legal agreements to ensure that we're securing all of that um, tenant compensation and tenant relocation that I've just outlined. And, and that final work would uh, occur prior to actual demolition, is that correct? That's correct, prior to demolition and prior to any eviction notices being um, um, provided to tenants. Great, thank you very much. Um, I can uh, I can summarize uh, then, uh, Mr. Chair. Just if you'd like, yes, there was uh, the motion. Are there any other questions for staff? Okay, speakers, Councillor Fillion. Uh, yes. So, just for the benefit of anyone who's not familiar with the history of this, I'll give a Reader's Digest version. So, there was um, an application to redevelop this site approved around the year 2000 for whatever reason um, the applicant did not proceed and then um, several years ago uh, came in with a completely new application for much higher density. Um, the city had a lot of problems with that proposal, uh, recommended refusal, the applicant before or after that appealed to what was then the Ontario Municipal Board um, subsequent to that, um, then wanted to try to, um, you know, and there was community meetings, you know, throughout all of this over the, the many years. Um, then the applicant became interested in settling, um, and um, I insisted that, that um, any of that happen publicly, that, uh, you know, that there not be some... Um, um, offer that uh, the residents would be unaware of that would come to council. So uh, the applicant, who generally has not been terribly easy to deal with, but uh, actually gave up their uh, hearing date and um, uh, over a period of time, you know, did negotiate a uh, reasonable um settlement with uh with staff i was able to take that out to a community meeting the uh, residents association actually uh bought into it um, as the kind of best deal we could get um, that included um, um a new park and um uh, a significant uh um Section 37 contribution of $9 million. There's nothing secretive or unusual about that. That's what everybody has to do. But uh, uh, as sometimes has happened in Ward 18, it was a, um, perhaps a larger amount than they were initially willing to pay. In fact, uh, I won't go into the details of that. <laughs> but it, that was a good news story. And um, Subsequent to all of that, there was a, um, a meeting held in May uh, with the tenants to uh, go over the relocation package. The folks who spoke to us today seemed to, for whatever reason, uh, not be aware of um, any of the foregoing. But, uh, um, you know, as these things go, this is actually, um, you know, a pretty good outcome. Um, a reasonable amount of um, development, a new park, uh, significant Section 37, um, and a, um, a good relocation package. And as uh, the um, our tenant uh, folks have uh, told us that the people can't be evicted uh, or the demolition permit actually, uh, the demolition actually happen until all of that has been completely secured. Uh, the timing today is important because uh, um, for the decision of the OLT to be final and binding, this uh, demolition has to be approved. Uh, otherwise, that the whole deal uh, would be uh, would not happen. And as we know, the rules are changing, and that would have some uh, 
pretty significant adverse consequences. So I'm happy to move the recommendations today. Thank you, Councillor Fillion. Any other speakers on the item? All right, I, I would only simply say that I empathize with the tenants affected by this. Uh, nobody likes to be displaced in their senior years. Very few people like to be displaced at any age. Uh, and I understand how upsetting and frustrating and stressful it is. But at the same time, it's our responsibility as a city to make sure that everyone is treated fairly with dignity and suffers no financial loss and is able to have a right to return and a financial settlement to pay for any out of cost expenses. So with that, I urge you to stay in touch with our housing unit, the local councillor, and of course the city and the property owner to make sure that you have the best package possible to reduce disruption, any kind of financial harm, and to make sure that if it is your wish, that you can come back. Councillor Fillion has moved the staff recommendations. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. I've been advised by the clerk that we have to go back to item 3410 and that the motion passed um, is out of the jurisdiction of community council and that a recommendation to Councillor Fillion was to, is to send the whole package up to city council without recommendation and it's my understanding that the motion that you moved uh, can be can be adopted there what what is item 10 mr chair i don't have the agenda in front of me i can't access it sorry item item 10 yeah 6 6125 young street on 10 center avenue uh you moved a report oh, okay. about the laneway And, so there's a, uh, pro a series a of action, but the report itself is really just to organize a community consultation. So I've been advised to the by if well, you except the community consultation's already taken place, but um, I'm not sure I agree with that ruling. But as a, a same difference, I can um, make the same motions at council if uh, if that's what staff is suggesting. They're suggesting, and a uh, clerk can respond directly if you wish, uh, that the whole package be moved up to council without recommendation. Sure, and I can, that's fine, that'll, that'll work. And uh, I'll uh, perhaps can talk to the clerk offline about why the, the motion was out of order. Okay, so I think we need a motion to reopen. All those in favor, opposed? That is carried. And Councillor Fillion, did you want to move it to to City Council without recommendation? Yes, that's fine. Thank you. Okay, a motion to move the item, item 10, to Council without recommendation. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Item number 9, 765 Steeles Avenue West. We have deputations on the item. Anne Mazor from Starlight Developments. Ms. Mazor? Oh, it's a call? Okay. Ms. Mazor, are you on the line? Hi, yes, thank you. Um, good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Uh, my name is Anne Mazori from Starlight Developments. 
I also have Eldon Theodore from MHBC Planning and Mansoor Kazaruni from IBI Architects on the line today as well. I did. Oh, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Please proceed. Oh, sorry. Okay, so we just wanted to take this opportunity to thank staff and the counselor for all of their hard work on this application, which has enabled us to bring forward the proposal before you today. Uh, we are very proud to be proposing this new development that will include a new community park, the addition of a new daycare space to support the local community, and new much needed purpose built rental housing. Um, so it's for these reasons that we kindly request your support um, our proposal today. Thank you. Great, thank you very much. Any questions for the deputy? Um, yes, and sorry to do this online. I'm just not, uh, there's kind of been a flurry of um, um, emails, which it's been hard for me to access this morning just with uh, you know, additional recommendations and modifications. And I wanted to make sure um, you had seen all of those and were okay with them before um, um, otherwise I could move it to council without recommendation and just make sure we're clear on everything. Um, um, by that time, just didn't know if you had a preference. Um, yes, yeah, so thank you um, through you, Mr. Chair to Councillor. Fillion, we are just in the process of reviewing those recommendations, and I, I do think that we will need some time to, to process them and, and uh, discuss. Okay, thank you. Then um, um, I'll tell me when it's time to uh, to speak or move a motion, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you, Councillor Fillion. Any other questions for the deputy? No, oh, and thank you very much. Vladimir Raff. I am even on nobody. Can you, can you hear me? Uh, yes, yeah, speak right into the mic. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. So I live on a neighboring street, uh, Regatta, and I go there for a walk on that property on a large green space, and other people go, and uh, walking dogs and make barbecue, all is going to pretty well disappear, and that doesn't sit right. But the traffic will be get uh, quite extensive, and we already cannot get on batteries and on steel. And uh, we asked John Fillion on, uh, to enlarge Greenwich Village, make it wider, because the TTC buses park there and it's impossible to pass them. And he said nothing will be done. So why are you uh, allowing bigger tax base, so to speak, to happen, and at the same time not allocating any money to the uh, community bed? That's larger issues, you know, you every year on a larger tax base, but the services being cut. For example, uh, Sunday night serenades here, you know, being canceled this year, it doesn't sit well, you know. And uh, you should do something about it, definitely. And another technicality is that the sign uh, supposed to be posted so that everyone knows what's going on. They put it on three years ago on a flimsy post. It been blown up in about two weeks and been lying for the last three years uh, in the grass. They reinstated it only two weeks ago, so hardly anyone even knows what's going to gonna happen in the area. It's not displayed on a sign, only shown the building that they're going to build along Steels Avenue, nothing else. So the sign is incorrect, and that should be enough uh, reason, you know, to um, defer this project, you know, don't allow permission to build the building. That's it. Thank you for your comments. Any questions for the deputy? No? Okay, thank you very much. Zhao Ning Shi, thank you for coming. You have five minutes. Yeah, 
I see the new proposal mentioned that the they, this builder, they made the new daycare and also the new public park, something like that. But the really problem is that in that, in, okay, in, in that location, really problem is the, is the, the, the area is very crowded with uh, so many, at least four, four buildings around that. If you build a new building, where do you have the time to get the, uh, uh, the area to, to build the uh, new park, public park? Right, uh, right, right now, actually, even there's no building. There are only small park in the southern set area. If you knew the build, building, where is the where is the, uh, the the park, and also um the on the Greenview Village Road, that's really small small very road only one lane, and uh, number seven bus stop is there, and it's terminal. Always have there are always a, a few buses lying on the on the one side of street, uh, very crowded especially at the rush hour, and the other. Um, Bathers and stills, they are every day, they are very crowded. So what's the the, the space for, for this this part? And also, I don't think they have the public uh, communication, uh, com community, community, or even the library, some places there. So if you have built there, how come we increase the 27 uh, stairs and also the uh, 298 um, rental units there, the population too density there. So I, I don't think this uh, um, is a really good proposal. And uh, also the building, between the building, there's five buildings. What's the distance between the two buildings? That's too, um, that, that's too, too, too narrow. And also even now, the kids, they cannot play, uh, get their own many park uh, 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 the size. So uh, that's also the, uh, I think in the future, that's not really for the, the populations. Um, yeah, I think there was the other things. Yeah, I think that's, a, um, that's my, my opinion. I, I don't really um, uh, like this problem, uh, I, the, the, this proposal, i really against it. Okay, thank you for your comments. Any questions for the deputy? Okay, thank you very much. Council with, uh, without recommendations uh, only um, because this has been done in a bit of a rush and uh, um, just want to make sure we, we get it right and it's easier. I'd rather just get the whole package right and be able to review that with uh, both the applicant and uh, staff and rather than uh, do it in a rush today and hope that I uh, got it all right. So um, <clears throat> just want to say this um, this was an application that, um, I mean, yes, to address some of the comments from the residents. There um, is starting to be a lot of density um, in that area as, as is happening kind of everywhere. Um, to the applicant's credit, and I will say they've been a uh, complete uh, pleasure to deal with. This is one of these Towers in the Park uh, applications. Uh, they have, you know, not appealed it, have not even talked about appealing it, um, have been, um, you know, extremely willing to um, work with my office and, uh, and planning staff. And what we have here is... Uh, uh, Purpose-built rental housing, yes, a fairly large building, but we uh, very, you know, desperately need rental housing, and uh, this is a, a, a place where it's uh, appropriate to um, to have a large building on Steeles Avenue. Uh, we are getting a new park. Uh, there may be places where people are walking their dogs now, but it is not a city park. It was part of the... Uh, applicant site um, and we are getting a new park and combining that with a park um, 
from the adjacent building. So there will be a good new real park owned by the city um, at this site. And um, also a, a really exciting improvement that has happened um, over the last month, literally, which is uh, part of the the kind of scramble to uh, get all the T's crossed and I's uh, eyes dotted, but um, we are having a child care center uh, built by the applicant, uh, paid for entirely by the applicant, um, and available to the city at, um, at no cost for 99 years. So that's... Uh, so the, the community benefits here are really tremendous. Rental, purpose-built uh, rental housing, uh, a new park, and a child care center, um, all at no cost to the city. So um, overall, uh, a very good development, a very cooperative um, and helpful applicant. And uh, I just want to uh, thank the staff, actually, who really scrambled uh, to get uh, this report ready for today and um, and the applicant who scrambled to get the child care center built into the proposal and all the drawings and everything uh, done for that by today. However, there's still kind of a few little threads that need to be tied up properly. So I think I'll be working on that between now and council and should be a quick item at council. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Fillion. Any other speakers on the item? Okay, so you're sending it up to Council without recommendation? That's correct. Okay. So 34.9765 Steeles Avenue West. Um, Councillor Fillion is moving uh, referral to Council without recommendation. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. We have to go back for our final item. Number eight, 4547 Hendon Avenue. Is there a Tyler Pack available? Mr. Peck, thank you very much. You are most patient. You have five minutes. Thank you, and I certainly won't be taking off the five minutes at the end of today's meeting. Uh, thanks to Community Council. My name is Tyler Peck from WD Associates, with the applicant for this project on the behalf of the owners. Provided just, the, clerk's the, end of the short term, presentation, which council members will have. The people who were I'd just like to thank supporting us over the last four years. Uh, so, if you have the names, that'd be great. Mr. Chair, we need you to mute. You're not the first to ask. Thanks. I'd just like to thank city planning, engineering, and transportation staff for working with us over the last couple of years on this uh, collaborative process for the proposal. We agree with the staff recommendations in their final report, further agree that the proposal is in keeping with the official plan, particularly implementing the North York Center secondary plan and the proposed OPA uh, regarding the parking rate and mechanical penthouse is appropriate and largely technical in nature. The rezoning of the site uh, in the former North York uh, zoning bylaw meets the height and density requirements of the secondary plan. And uh, the proposal meets the residential intensification expectations of an urban growth center. The project is a very good example of missing middle development providing an appropriately scaled and thoughtfully designed uh, low-rise apartment building in close proximity to higher order transit and in a transition location between high-rise and low-rise development in North York Center. I'm also happy to highlight a letter of support that was filed by a local resident with Community Council. Uh, further to the staff report, which outlines the uh, planning framework and justification, just request that Community Council adopt the staff recommendations and happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you very much. Any questions for the deputant? Okay, thank you, Tyler. He is the only deputant I have on the list. So we can go to questions for staff. 
speakers? Uh, yes, I'll move the staff recommendations. It uh, took a bit of time for the applicant to comply with the um, official plan, but uh, they ultimately did, and it's a good development. Happy to move uh, approval. All right, the staff recommendations moved on item 8, 34-8, Hendon Avenue. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Before we do the bills, I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank uh, my councillor colleagues, uh, Councillor Robinson, Councillor Cole, Councillor Carroll, Deputy Mayor Minna Wong, and Councillor Fillion, who is retiring, and I certainly wish you all the best uh, in the years ahead. I'd also like to thank Oh, there's some applaud out there. <laughs> I don't want to rush un this. We're unmuting our applause. Here you go. <laughs> and and shouldn't he have a, a, a slew of items on his last meeting? I'd also like, I'd like to thank all the support staff who make um, North York Community Council operate and so successfully. Uh, of course, Julie and Amanda, uh, Jennifer, Brooke, Mambir, Julian, Nick, and Jeff. And of course, if I've forgotten anyone, I do apologize. Here, we'll so, unmute that applause as well, Mr. Chair. You, you you guys have really had quite a time this morning. What a finale. <laughs> yeah, we did, we, we did end on dramatic fashion. So I just wanted to thank everybody. It's been an honor to chair over the last four years. I, I can't believe the term is at an end. I think this uh, council, this community council could be proud of all the work it's done over the last four years, all the difficult policy that we've adopted and the applications we've approved. And I think North York and the city of Toronto are better for it. So I wanted to thank you. It was a most difficult term for obvious reasons. And I wish you all uh, good luck in the upcoming election. And of course, we'll see you at council, either in person or virtually. And now we. Can I'd do just the bells. like to uh, to thank uh, everybody, Mr. Chair, including you. And uh, it's really been a really collegial group, like, uh, and um, that always hasn't been the case here. And it's really been, uh, you know, it's really been a pleasure to come to these meetings the last four years. I wish they'd uh, were in person rather than online, but. You know, um, I mean, you always knew that uh, the other members were interested in uh, in working with you. And, uh, you know, that's really terrific because we know how difficult the, the job is. And it's really important to have colleagues who, um, you know, have taken a real interest in, um, in all of us helping one another to get the best uh, outcomes for our community. Sounds like platitudes, but... Uh, I wouldn't have said that every year on the last uh, last uh, meeting of community council, and it's but it really has been the case this term. And uh, so, thanks to everybody for that. Thank you very much, Councillor Fillion, for your gracious for gracious comments. Can I, Does can anyone I else like want to? Yeah. Could I just say also thank you to the chair? It's a very difficult job. Uh, we've had very contentious developments this term that's going to continue and so thank you for making sure things are on track and moving ahead and I'm particularly enjoying your Madonna esque look today with your headset so keep up the good work um well, thank I you also want to thank I also want to thank um Councillor John Fillion who I've known for a long time um and he's a pretty amazing guy all around but uh, I want to thank him for coaching me on planning issues and I've often followed his leads and learned best practices from him over the years in this capacity. So I just want to thank John for all your good work as a city councillor, but also mentoring. Uh, I'm not a newbie, that's for sure anymore, but when I was, uh, I certainly I certainly used your, uh, your models and some of your creative workarounds that were just that very creative. 
and um, your leadership on those files was uh, much appreciated. Thank you yeah. very much, Councillor Robinson. I'm I'm smiling because sometimes staff would say, "What do you want to do with this? What do you want to do with this?" I said, "Do what Fillion did last week. Same thing." Councillor Cole, can I just add to that? I just uh, want to thank again uh, you, uh, Mr. Chairman, for your very uh, efficient and uh, sensitive uh, leadership as chair. It's not easy uh, dealing with some pretty uh, complex and some very uh, also contentious issues, uh, as was today. Thank you for that, James. And to my colleagues, uh, Councillor Jay Robinson, uh, Councillor uh, Deputy Mayor Min Wong and Councillor Carroll uh, and uh, it's been wonderful working with you again it's been a, a very awkward uh, process the last couple of years but I think we've done our best here for the people we represent and I just want a special uh, goodbye to uh, but uh, maybe so long not goodbye to John Fillion for you know his, his incredible uh, expertise and uh, dedication to some incredible challenges uh, in Willowdale, especially in, in the uh, Young Shepherd area. Uh, you know, the files that he has handled, uh, I mean, uh, he basically does the work of 10 Bay Street law firms uh, in dealing with some of these planning complexities. Uh, and uh, he has uh, fought, uh, you know, extremely well for the people he represents for the city of Toronto and the public interest and to have uh, him available uh, has been really a great asset uh, for the city of Toronto and the people of uh, Willowdale to have him with his expertise and and his uh, judgment and also uh, incredible uh, integrity uh, through these very very challenging uh, years uh, not only planning file, but also on other things. But, you know, we're certainly going to lose a huge uh, uh, asset. Uh, the city's going to lose a huge asset and not having John Fillion here and the people of North York and the people of uh, Willowdale that he represents uh, certainly uh, uh, are losing uh, an incredible person uh, with incredible talent and, uh, and also a good sense of humor. Uh, and um, and so I hope to uh, see you continue uh, uh, contributing uh, to uh, the city's life, as I'm sure you will. And um, maybe uh, one day uh, uh, we can uh, host a John Fillion uh, uh, concert, uh, a goodbye concert, uh, uh, and uh, say thank you. And we see if we can get uh, some uh, notable. Maybe we can get Gordon Lightfoot up here if he's still walking. But anyways, uh, thank you, John, and um, all the very best. Great. Thank you, Councillor. Thank Cole. you all so much. Really any, appreciate any it. Any other speakers on the item? <laughs> okay. No, I, I'll, I'll have another opportunity with Councillor Philly, and I'll leave it at that, Mr. Chair. Okay. Thank you, Madam Vice Chair. All right. We're going to give... Uh, Councillor Phil in the honor of uh, moving the confirmatory bill on our last meeting of this term. It's on the screen. That the North York Community Council pass and declare as a bylaw a confirmatory bill to confirm the legislative proceedings of the North York Community Council acting under delegated authority at meeting 34 on July 18th, 2022. Excellent motion. Well written and well read. All those in favor? <laughs> Opposed, that is carried. And, and Councillor Robinson. Did he do Robinson. that last four years ago? Did he not do that four years ago? I think so. Yeah, but you didn't make nice enough speeches, so he came back. That's why we doubled down on the speeches. Councillor Robinson, we've got one more motion. Oh, we don't have a bylaw. Okay, should I? Should I? Okay, um, no, I, I do apologize. That was it. 
Oh, okay. Because I was going to bundle Mike Harris's name into it, but I guess I won't have that opportunity. Oh, good old Mike. Anyway, I wish you all the best, and we'll see you at council. Thank you very much, everybody, clerks, IT, counselors, and counselor staff. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, of course, members of the public. It was a dramatic end to a great term. Thank you very much. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Shabbat shalom.